Forge Masters, and uh, we're going to be teaching you how to use Forge the right way and not uh, the dorky, gay, retarded way. Many people hate it that Forge is so bumpy, but uh, if you are like me, you probably, um, you know, are pretty mad at yourself if you didn't come up with the idea to turn down the sensitivity. So when you're in Forge, you should probably have your tense sensitivity turned down to one so that the camera isn't so bumpy and it doesn't rip out um, all of the stuff that you did. And uh, be careful deleting this other chip. So I'm going to start on forging this map that I made. It's a pretty simple map because uh, it's got nothing on it. And why do I spawn down here? That's weird. Okay, well, there are three le well, it, for those of you who don't know how to forge on Sandbox, this level is the crypt, but I'm not going to forge in the crypt today. I'm going to go up, and I'm going to forge on the normal level. Now, uh, this place isn't empty, obviously, because there's, there's a red kill ball that's sitting up on the sky level. So, yeah, and by the way... For those of you who didn't notice, there is a portal right here that leads directly to the sky level. If you don't have that portal, then you can't get there, which is weird if you have it. Yep, so it's just floating up here. I put it up here to make it look sort of like a sun. Um, yeah. Alright, so some tips and tricks for Forge. Number one, to make stuff float the easy way, the way that I usually sort of use, is the way of deleting all the stuff underneath the object. So, I'm going to put a block on top of a block. Then I'm going to delete the block under it. Well, what happened? Maybe it will fall because everything else falls. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, it's not really weird because uh, that's sort of what's supposed to happen. So yeah, it's supposed to float like that, and I have no idea why. It just does, so it's pretty cool. Huh? Anyways, that's how you make stuff float. The easy way, the hard way, um, which I haven't fully mastered, is to start a new round while you're holding something and yeah it's for some reason it, it decides to let go I have no idea why it just does um, I'm supposed to keep holding it but I don't know how I'm going to keep holding it so I think I'll try that again just to make sure it works No, it doesn't. Okay, well, I don't know why that happened. My controller may have something wrong with it where it double taps the A button, but I have no idea why it let go of that. That's weird. But very, very, it's not very hard, but uh, I could use a little bit more practice. So that's pretty much how you make stuff float. Um, then there's geometric um, morphing, which, um, is a big long word for making something go inside of another object. So it should be pretty easy. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to push the handy dandy X button on your handy dandy controller. Um, and the item property should come up. Then you should go to place at start and push no because we don't want it to be placed at the start because that it wouldn't work. So then we are going to start a new round so that it doesn't come up and um, if you if you really t if you are really good at it you could probably do it in 10 seconds but um depending on where you have the spawn points in a map it can be tough. So yeah, you just have to remember where you spawn it and there should be like a yellow triangle here. And I can't find it. 
Why? Because it hasn't spawned in yet. Yeah, there's kind of a way that you have to memorize. Here it is. So then we're going to put another block right next to that. And it's going to be instantly... Uh-oh. Well, I didn't put that in right. So I think I'm going to try that again. This time I'm going to put it over the crypt so that I have a bearing. And a bearing is something that you'll find in a compass. I'm just kidding. I don't know what a bearing is. I just heard someone say I thought the world was cool. So, is it still pushed it? Nope, we don't want that to start. Okay. So we are then going to start a new round. Ding, ding. Okay. And now I'll know why, where I placed it. And uh, if you lose track of an object, always look for the like yellow triangle just where you placed it. It should be like right there. Yeah. Okay, so then you should just push it here. And there you go. So then you just have to wait about 25 seconds. If I took a little bit shorter than the last time, it should just pop in place. Just wait and wait. And there you go. And as you can see, look, it looks like one object. But if you move it, it will come apart. And since I have no attachment to this object at all, I'm going to move it. And it's going to instantly come apart, as I said before. So that's a pretty simple thing. Uh, what else can I show you? Blocking off towers. I have no idea how to do that. So if you're going to send me a comment and ask me how to do that, I do not know how to do that. But a tip, a very cheap tip to blocking off the towers is to clear out a map that already has the towers blocked off. So then you can just do that. Oh, and uh, if, you're do if you have made no uh, sandbox maps at all, you could probably, you have to delete the block that is inside of the crypt before you before you start to get into the crypt. Alright. And for most of you who aren't familiar with the sky bubble, here's a tip that can easily make a floor with a wall. So walls are pretty flat, which is weird because walls are supposed to be pretty thick. Usually. So usually walls should be thick, thickened. Now this grid represents the ground, so basically anything that's on top of the grid is going to not fall, any, any um, scenery that is, will not interact with the grid, this is basically the edge of the map. Uh oh. Sometimes if you push it too hard inside of the grid it will pop through, but it sits on top of there when you're not using it. And of course, um, the sky bubble is highly toxic, which is always good. You always know if you're pushing it against the grid, you always hear that, that uh, sound. And uh, be careful not to pull the walls together too hard, or they will come out of placement. And so, be careful when you're spawning in, because sometimes the edit uh, to spawn mode is a little shaky because your player is bigger than the thing you're spawning on. Uh, the thing you're spawning in from. And then, um, so it can uh, sometimes pull you here. So then, what happens if we jump? Well, I said it was highly toxic earlier. Even though you can shoot down below. Really good way to fuel your friends in Forge. Put a hidden portal in there. A special custom power up up here, a sniper rifle, and uh, you've got a pretty good kill spree. So just jump into the grid, and what will happen? Well, let's find out. You die. Yeah, that's right. Um, you will die at all if you do that. And that brings me to another thing: roller coasters. Fall off a roller coaster, you automatically die. But the roller coaster stays up there because it floats. Like I said earlier. 
And it's really weird that you can actually pick up the weapons that fall down to the ground. Because they have fallen like 500 feet. And uh, wouldn't you think that would break? I don't know. Physics are all messed up in this game anyways. Reach is going to have um, a better... And yeah, Crypt is also played online whenever you're playing Griff Ball. Uh, by the way, it's all it's always played on Griff Ball usually. Griff Ball is really usually it's either usually played up here down or up on the sky bubble or downstairs. Alright. More cool stuff, just funny stuff I'm gonna show you right now. Some scenery you can get. A seven wood. Also found in Griff Ball. A golf ball. And a golf hole. By the way, the golf ball will always land in the golf hole. Just a theory. It won't matter where you drop the golf ball, it will always go towards the hole. Unless it's too far away. See? And uh, the golf club is used as a gravity hammer. But it looks like a golf club. And then the flag is the PGGA, which stands for, I'm not sure, but, um, I'm not, I'm not, I'm really not sure what it stands for, but it has a really cool logo, like a gas mask, or whatever, so, yeah. And then on all the other maps, there's also one more thing, a soccer ball, and I think there may be a goal, too, so. Then some more things, uh, if you're going to plan on making maps for other game modes, you can have it be different effects, which look horrible on Sandbox. Some of them, like the pen and ink. You can't see anything. The Nova makes it all blurry. And uh, the old-timey... Well, I guess, it's, I guess it looks okay, but if you're planning on going outside of the map, it's not very good. Uh, so this was a little bit of stuff on Forge, so... This was another episode of Forge Masters. Hope you guys liked it.